One of my favorite quilt blocks has to be the log cabin quilt block. It is a traditional quilt block and it is just so easy to sew. It is a perfect block for beginners. Hi, my name is Fallon and I love to quilt and today I'm going to be sharing a log cabin quilt pattern with you. All of the fabrics and the pattern were sent to me by Missouri Star Quilt Company. I just became a brand ambassador for them and I'm so excited for the opportunity. If you are interested in making this quilt, I would love for you to use my link in the description of this video or if you just want to shop for quilt fabrics and other quilty goodness. This quilt pattern was a huge reminder to me of the versatility of the log cabin quilt block. Careful placement of light and dark fabrics can really make different designs and shapes come to life in a quilt top. To bring this quilt pattern to life, there are three types of log cabin blocks that will be carefully placed within the pattern to bring this design to life. Those quilt blocks are a split block, a light block, and this dark block. Now the pattern will tell you exactly how many of each you will need to make and you can of course follow that layout. However, I'm going to make this pattern my own in a very small way and this is a reminder to you that when you find a quilt pattern that relies on those lights and darks to make a design you could always swap them if you wanted to to make your the pattern your own so for this quilt pattern i'm going to swap where the light fabrics are and the dark fabrics are so my dark fabrics are going to make up the star and the light fabrics are going to be the background so I'm really excited to see how it looks because sometimes you just need to see it in fabric to really visualize it. But I thought, why not have fun here? So the first thing I'm going to do is press all of my dark fabric that is yardage, and then I'm going to cut it into 2.5 inch strips. After I get all of that fabric pressed and cut, then I'm going to move on to cutting the pieces that I need for the log cabin blocks. Here is all the fabric all cut, so now we are ready to sew. You can see I made it easy for myself and organized it between the light fabric and the dark fabric. I am going to show how to piece the split block. So this is the log cabin block that is split between dark and light fabrics. All of the log cabin blocks for this quilt are going to be pieced the exact same way. Just some are going to have dark and light, some are going to be all light, and some are going to be all dark. So I'm going to start sewing these, and I am actually going to chain piece these because I think it'll be a lot quicker that way. So what that means is I'm going to take the first two pieces that are sewn together, and those are the small squares. The measurements will be all in the pattern, and I'm going to sew these together and I'm just going to sew all of them that I need to make the split blocks together on this step. So I'm just going to place two right sides together. I'm using batik so I don't really worry about which side is the right side. They all kind of look the same and I'm just going to sew all these two small little squares together I think this just makes quick work of it. It's kind of like production sewing. We're just gonna do all of the same step at one time. Just make sure you don't have two stuck together. You'll be wondering why you're missing a fabric. Have you ever done that before? I've sewn more than one square together at a time. All right, after we chain piece this last one together, we are going to cut all of these apart and then press them all to the dark side. Okay, so after getting the first two blocks sewn together and pressed, we're going to go to the next rectangle, sew that on right sides together and press it. 
and then move on to the next. We're just gonna work around sewing each one on and pressing them. So all of my split blocks are done. So these are the blocks that have the light and the dark fabrics. So here is all of them. There is a bunch of them. So now I'm going to move on to the block that has just dark fabrics. After sewing three different log cabin blocks together, I started to lay out the blocks on my design wall. This was a lot of fun seeing the pattern come together, but if you notice, my design wall was not quite big enough for this quilt. This is going to be a very large quilt, 80 inches by 80 inches. I just tried to make it work the best I could. I put some pins in the blocks around the edge and was able to get it all laid out. After finalizing a layout that I like, I honestly didn't move this one around too much. A lot of the blocks look very similar for the background and for the formation that makes up the star, so I really didn't fuss with it too much. Now, if you have fabrics that have a lot of contrast between them, maybe you might want to take a few photos of your layout, move things around if you need to. What I'm going to do is sew these rows together one at a time. I'm starting with row one, and what I did was place a marking pin with the number one on the first block in row one, and then I stacked them in order. I'm gonna take them over to the sewing machine and start sewing them together. The reason I like to place the pin in here, so in row two I'll place place a pin that has a number two on it on the first block. So one, I can keep them all in order, but two, when I'm over at the sewing machine, I know that this block with the pin in it is always going to be the first block in the row, and then I'll put them right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam. If something takes me away from the sewing machine for a minute and I come back, I might not remember what side is the side that I started with on the row and I might sew something to the wrong side and things will come out wrong. Another thing I'm going to do is keep my pattern next to me at the sewing machine. This will be really helpful to make sure when I get to the split blocks or um, any of the other types of blocks in a row, if the orientation isn't quite right, I can refer back to the layout page and just make sure things are looking fine for each row. After sewing each row together, I'm going to press each row's seams in opposite directions so that everything will nest together. And then I'm going to sew all the rows together. I'll put a lot of pins in each row. These are long, long rows and it'll help things not get wonky. After I get everything sewn together, I'm going to quilt this quilt. Here's the backing I chose for this quilt. I purchased this a while ago from Missouri Star Quilt Company with my own money. Um, I planned on using it for a different quilt, but when I got it in, I wasn't quite happy with how the red would look with that quilt, but I think it'll work here. For these really large quilts, I really like to purchase 108 inch wide backing fabric when possible. Sometimes you can't quite find a color that works well. There aren't as many options, 
but when you can find something that will work perfectly, it makes me so happy because I feel like it's a better price for 108 inch backing and Missouri Star Quilt Company's prices on this is really, really good. This is a three yard cut, so it'll work for this quilt, probably get some binding out of it. And then I will also have a little bit left over that I can probably use on some other smaller projects. So this will go a long way for me. All right, so now I'm gonna share a little bit of the quilting on this quilt. For the quilting on this Echo Star Quilt from Missouri Star Quilt Company, I decided to just keep it pretty simple. I did some fun loops and stars. I think the loops and stars were a lot of fun to quilt and I think it suited the quilt very nicely since it is a star design on it. I just kept the quilting really easy peasy for me. I didn't do any specific amount of loops before I did a star. I just did whatever felt good to me. As I quilted this quilt, I couldn't help but really be in awe that all of this came together from the log cabin block. It just really amazes me how versatile this block is. What do you think? After getting all of the quilting done, I kept it really simple and just trimmed up the quilt my way, which is just trimming right along the top of the quilt. I didn't try to square it up or anything like that. I just trimmed off all of the excess fabric. Now this time I decided to bind the quilt by hand. I still cut my binding strips to two and a half inches, sewed them together end to end, and then ironed them in half. But this time I sewed the binding onto the front of the quilt and then flipped it to the back to hand stitch down. Now I have only hand sewn a binding onto a quilt once before and it was a small wall hanging and I really didn't get the fuss at that time because I didn't think it lo really looked much better on the back of the quilt. I thought the front of the quilt looked nice but the back of the quilt I mean I could see my stitches and then I realized after watching a few videos that that was on me I really didn't know how to hand sew the binding on. So after watching a few tutorials, I decided to attempt it again on this quilt, mainly because of how large this quilt is. It is 80 inches by 80 inches. That is huge, and that is a lot of weight to maneuver through my sewing machine to put the binding on. I really have a hard time getting the machine binding stitches really nice and even, even on a smaller quilt, so I knew it would not look great on this quilt. I put a lot of time and effort into it, so I really wanted the binding to look nice too. I attempted it and I actually really enjoyed it. I loved seeing how nicely the binding was coming out, out on the back of the quilt after really learning how to hand sew the binding on. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like really happy, so happy that I'm probably going to try this technique on more quilts going forward. Now I'm definitely not going to hand sew the binding down on all of my quilts. I make a lot of quilts and some of them are going to be smaller and easy to maneuver through my sewing machine to get that binding on, but on some of them I'm definitely going to enjoy sitting down with my family watching a movie and hand stitching the binding on nice and slow and getting it looking perfect. I am so happy with how this Echo Star quilt pattern turned out for Missouri Star Quilt Company. I really love how I flipped the dark and white 
fabrics to get a little bit of a different look. I think it just gave an extra touch to make it uniquely mine. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. I really love Missouri Star Quilt Company's patterns. I think they're really accessible to all levels of quilters, no matter where they're at in the process of learning. And I think their patterns are just so easy to follow. Now, if you would like to grab this pattern and some fabric so that you could sew it together, I would love for you to use my link down in the description of this video. Let me know if this is a pattern you would try out and let me know what your favorite quilt block is. Is it the Log Cabin Block 2 or is it another quilt block? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.